KHJ-TV Public Affairs presents School Beat. And now your host, Roberta Weintraub. Good evening. Day and night, American youth are enticed by electronic visions of a world so violent, sensual, and narcotic that childhood itself appears to be under siege. The images portrayed to the young through records, TV, videos, and films are so provocative that parents are in an uproar, psychologists are warning of dire consequences, and entertainment producers are fearful of threats to free speech and nationwide record boycotts. Public pressure has already forced the $4.3 billion a year recording industry to voluntarily slap parental guidance stickers on records and tapes. The conflict over what is suitable entertainment for 66 million Americans under the age of 19 engages politicians, senators' wives, parents, and major rock stars. Tonight on School Beat, we'll examine that conflict with Frank Zappa, an outspoken opponent to any form of abridgment of First Amendment rights, Jim Hodson, producer of Real Videos, and Norma Downs, communications commissioner of the California State PTA. Stay tuned as School Beat debates the crusade launched against porn lyrics that is forcing a showdown with the record industry. We'll be right back after the break. Porn lyrics and the possible censorship. I'd like to read to you some lyrics from Darling Nikki. I know a girl named Nikki. I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I met her in a hotel lobby masturbating with a magazine. She said, how'd you like to waste some time? And I could not resist when I saw little Nikki grind or from Prince's album, Oral Sex and Incest. My sister never made love with anyone but me. Incest is everything it's said to be. Is that pornography? Is it necessary? Well, that would be the... the I well, only read you yeah. the ones I could read yeah. aloud. Right, right. Mm -hmm. The thing, well, pornography, I think, is a, a word that is very hard to define. In someone's mind, it's sure it's pornography. I, it's not in good taste. It's It's... Not necessary. Justice Potter said he knew it when he saw it. Maybe. Is that true? I don't know that you'd even have to see it. Or it, hear it? Just, or hear, hearing it is, is a, it's not a good feeling that comes with hearing something like that. Mm. And, and kids develop their uh, patterns of living by everything that they see and hear and feel. And it would seem that this would be pretty confusing. Is it confusing, Frank? Well, when you consider that masturbation is a practice that has been going on since the, the beginning of time, from cradle to grave, I don't see why it makes any difference if Prince sings about it. Uh, the idea that hearing the lyric to a song is going to corrupt you, that is going to send you to hell, that is going to turn you into a social liability, is not backed up by any kind of scientific data. It's stupid. And you would not be in favor of any kind of censorship of rock lyrics or censorship there of any kind of I'm not in favor of, of censorship of any description. Well, censorship is not what we're talking about, though. Well, yes, is we are. Sort of? Well, yes, we are talking about the possible censorship of rock videos, of rock lyrics, and the movement that is in Washington to bring about that censorship in order to take lyrics, such as I've just read to you, off the air. Am I not discussing this correctly? Am well, I Well, your case? opening uh, statement that's setting up the show is the same kind of confusing stupidity that has been attended to this issue since the, the ladies went into business uh, May 14th, 1985. How do you define it? Then? Well, first of all, you should be real specific. If we're talking about words, don't stick the videos in there. Don't talk about, don't spread it out like a cow flop across the whole spectrum of uh, human entertainment experience. They, when I say they, the PMRC has created the illusion that a connection between lyrics to a song um, and strange social behavior is something that has to be pinned on people in a specific industry. And then they talk about uh, videos and films and stuff on the sideline to emphasize this pornographic aspect. And it's, it's a con job. It is simply not real. But MTV uses the combinations of videos and the li rock lyric music. That's so another that's issue, way. though. The, All right. the original issue was words. We're okay. talking about words. Let's and go to they, words. And the words are, are visible in the songs, too. I mean, it's just visual music. Yeah, I'm, but I'm talking about specifically what the PMRC did in their campaign. They started the scare campaign that words will make you do bad things, okay? And then got on television for two reasons. One, because videos existed. You could take a video and you could cut up 
uh, pictorial videos and make a nice little bumper to start your news story off. And then the announcer would say, look at this. You decide whether the words are going to hurt you. But it's always, look at this, now decide about the words. If there weren't any videos to dramatize it for television, they wouldn't have gotten the kind of coverage on the, the nightly news that they got. I sort of disagree with that statement only because I think that the PTA, and I'm not going to state the case for them, has been on this issue for many, many years. In Not my many, opinion, at least one. well, in my opinion, the it got the coverage that it did because you had a couple of senators' wives involved. That, well, I was going to say that's another reason why they got coverage, but it wouldn't have been as extensive if the news itself hadn't have been pictorial. Of course, they would have gotten on the news because they're senators' wives. Yes. Okay, that's obvious. But the reason it got so much exposure on the media is because it sells deodorant. It's a catchy, flashy little news story. You can stick it in every 5 o'clock news and look at this, now you decide. And it's a joke. Jim, how do you see the issue? Well, I think that's kind of a smokescreen because, I mean, even if it's visual or not, uh, the lyrics speak for themselves. I mean, that's like the quote you mentioned, I don't want to listen to that kind of stuff. And while well, I think he has the right to say it, um, it scares me that he would and that people would produce it as a record company and then people would buy it too and it would get airplay, it gets radio airplay. But if we were to put labels on record albums, wouldn't that indeed stifle creativity? Wouldn't that indeed make a whole different music industry than the one that we have? I think it would change it a little bit. Um, once again, the precedent would be motion pictures. Uh, producers purposely make films to be rated R because they make more money. And the record industry tends to say, well, no one will buy them if they're rated R. But I think it's just the opposite. If you rate a record R, say this is bad, people will automatically want it more. And uh, that's just a sad statement on society today. But Well, would you, rate, would you rate some of the lyrics that I read and some of the others that I didn't rate? Would you rate them R? Would you rate them X? Would you rate sure. them at all? Well, if, if there was a rating system, they would be rated R and X. But I think the answer is to have the lyrics printed on the outside of the albums, kind of like a uh, food item. If you want to know what's inside, you read the lab read the label and see the ingredients. Because if I want to eat, if I want to eat uh, healthfully, I want to know what I'm eating before I buy it. Would you object to that, Frank? Well, here's what the problem is. First of all, you're still confusing the issue because the agreement has already been reached and it does not include a rating system. There's no R, no X, no G, no PG. The agreement reached on November 1st, according to the Associated Press Wire report, says. The record industry and the PMRC and the PTA have come to an agreement. Here's what the agreement contains. That the parents groups will have no control over saying what is explicit. Gordikoff said what's explicit is explicit. The agreement also states that the record industry will make the decision as to what gets the warning. The warning says this. Uh, explicit lyrics, parental advisory. There's no RPG or anything like that. That's all it is. Furthermore, it states that any artist who has contractual control over his album packaging is free to ignore the understanding. So that means he doesn't have to stick it on there if he wants. Basically, what has been agreed to is face-saving PR. The record industry did the PMRC and the PTA a big favor by agreeing to this non-binding nothingness so that the ladies could look like they accomplished something. Basically, they have accomplished nothing except to confuse the American public with this. And it's continuing here. You're still talking about R, PG, and, and the rest of this stuff. It, it didn't happen. All right, well, he's would, just accused you of nothingness now. <laughs> would you rather have legislation then? No, I'll, I'll fight it all. You know, because but the fact of the matter is, what occurred at that press conference was a scam, and, and the Los Angeles Times left out the two lines from the Associated Press wire report that tells you that nothing really happened. Well, but it is happening. Every time a parent picks up a record that has the, the lyrics printed on it, that parent has the, the privilege then and the right to refuse a young child having that record in the home. As the children get older, sure, they're going to make their, up their own minds about what they buy, but by this time, they will have recognized what the parents' values are and hopefully go along with them. Frank, but, you talk about this, thank you, you talk about this as being a scam. It is a scam. And I think that what Norm is trying to say is that if the scam, so to speak, is not accepted, then stronger methods will be used, things that will probably be even much less acceptable. Am well, I that too would be a scam. Your case? First uh, of all, the, the legislation was recommended by Senator Hollings, and the legislation that he recommended... And